In the late summer of 1142, I had left my home country, England, for good. My old life lay in shambles, as did my former home of Kingsbridge. Having failed both my friends and family, I had set out to find my baby's father, the man I still loved with all my heart, Jack Jackson. And so early one morning in July, I finally arrived on the shores of Normandy. With nothing on me but a pouch of coin and a young, curious face yet unnamed, who was just as unfamiliar to this new world as was I. You're still here. Oh, it's you. I'm just trying to get my feet used to good solid ground again. The last bit of our voyage wasn't exactly my pint of ale. That hammer you're carrying, do you happen to be a mason? Actually, I am. You have a keen eye, mistress. I guess I just know a mason when I see one. To be honest, I haven't been one long. Just finished my apprenticeship in Salisbury. Before that, I used to shear sheep with my parents, but I guess that wasn't really for me. Father still hates me for leaving, though. What will you do to find work here as a mason? Don't know. That's for me to find out. All I heard was that the wages are better over here. So you'll just travel from town to town and look for employment? Right. And I'll start in Lassay. A fellow mason told me about the abbey there. He said these Normans build their churches quite differently than we do back home. I need to see that with my own eyes. Maybe learn a thing or two. Do many masons go to Lassay? Ah, I don't know. It's really just a tiny town. The mason who told me just happened to do some repairs there once. It's likely he told others as well. I left my old life as well. Scary, isn't it? To start off fresh and all that. Well, you definitely sound more excited than scared. Oh, I am excited. Wouldn't anyone be? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I'm looking for someone. A red-haired mason called Jack Jackson. He came to France about a year ago or so. A fellow mason? Great. Unfortunately, I wouldn't know a thing. After all, I just arrived here with you. I know, but should you meet someone like that on your journey, tell him Aliena of Shiring is looking for him. All right. Jack Jackson. I'll keep an eye out for you. Thank you. Have a safe journey. Oh, thank you. You too.
Hey, you. That's quite a bundle you got there. Where are you headed? Do you know the road to Lesse? Been there, seen it. But I hope you're not planning to go there on foot. Tell you what, you give me some coins and I'll treat you to me wagon. You can even change your destination once we're on the road, would you say? Have you seen a red-haired mason? He must have landed here sometime late last summer. <laughs> Another ginger in Normandy? I wouldn't have noticed, even if he was carrying a hammer instead of a fishing rod. Maybe you should ask someone in Barfleur. That's where all the travellers come through, the pilgrims and kings. Their lot rarely lands in Cherbourg, with the fortress passing back and forth between Stephen of Blois and Geoffrey of Anjou. Why you even came to Cherbourg in the first place baffles me. It was the earliest ship I could get. He must be in some hurry, madam. Let's just say I needed to get away before I changed my mind. Fine with me. Who am I to judge? What other routes are there besides going through Barfleur? Oh, I don't know, really. You need to ask the locals about that. But Barfleur sounds like a good place to start. Shake my hand and I'll take you there. All right. Take me out of town. All right. Where do you need to be? We went to Barfleur, a scenic port town built on granite. It was the biggest harbour in Normandy and the main entry point for the Normans to their new possession of the Isle of England. I talked to some of the sailors and fishermen, but no one had remembered seeing Jack. How could they? Almost a year had passed since he, a simple mason, had journeyed through the busy town, a town with no memory other than that of the last king who passed through on yet another one of his violent conquests. Maybe I was approaching this the wrong way. What had drawn him to France in the first place? The distance to Kingsbridge? Or something specific? What was my lead? Lesay was tiny, but as it turned out, worth the trip. In the small abbey church of the Trinity, I met a monk who claimed to have talked to a man fitting Jack's description. He'd been fascinated by the abbey's rib vaulting and had asked the monks countless questions about the place's construction. The monk apologized that he couldn't tell me where Jack had traveled next, but I didn't mind. I lay down to sleep on the floor of the Abbey Guesthouse and, for the first time in almost a year, I felt relief. As I drifted into sleep, I hugged our baby tight and whispered into his tiny pink ear, we're going to find your daddy. My father had once told me tales of the Mont Saint-Michel. Long ago, the archangel Michael had urged Hubert of Avranche to build an abbey on a lonely rock on the ocean by burning a hole into his head. They say one can go and see his penetrated skull on display in the church of his hometown. It was a windy day when I arrived, and the place was crowded with pilgrims, pilgrims and jongleurs. I remembered Jack's fascination with these tellers of stories. I spoke to one who was just taking a break. As it happened, he had indeed met Jack, although not in Mont Saint-Michel, but on a road heading east from there. Apparently, Jack had been hopelessly tracking Jongleur, who might have known his father, Jack Cherbourg. But as he'd been gradually running out of money, he'd intended to look for work in Le Mans or Tours. 
That was about six months ago. I was catching up. Going to Le Mans reminded me of all the trouble I'd left behind in England. Thirty years ago, Le Mans had been conquered by the Plantagenet Geoffrey of Anjou, Maud's husband. And although they'd held it ever since, other noble families kept on pulling at the city, like Maud and Stephen tearing at England. There was no sign of Jack, but I got news of a new kind of cathedral being built in Saint-Denis, just north of Paris. It was possible that Jack had gone there to learn from the craftsmen. That was, if he hadn't travelled further south, looking for work in one of the many churches in Tours, the hometown of Saint-Martin. Good day. Are you the master builder? What is it? I'm looking for a mason who may have passed through here. An Englishman with carroty hair. He calls himself Jack Jackson. Hmm. A redhead? Yes. Did you see him? He might have asked for work here. No, no. I I'm not looking for new masons. We're just doing repairs. Ah, but was he here? No. Never seen him. Now, stand back, woman. Something could fall on your baby's head. Are there other construction sites around Tours? Well, yes. It's a big town. And where would an outsider most likely find a job? Dunno. Ask around. You hesitated when I mentioned a redhead. Are you sure you haven't seen him? Yes, I am sure. May I talk to your workers? No, they're busy. And I can assure you they have nothing to say on that matter. Perhaps I'll talk to them once they've finished for the day. It would be a waste of time. <sighs> all right, all right, he was here was working for me, but I had to throw him out after two or three days. Why? Because he was all want, want, want. Let me redesign the roof, let me make the nave lighter. All pretty ideas, but he never shut up long enough to do the work he was supposed to do. Shit, that man was almost as needy as my son when he was still a brat. Mm, he does know a lot about his craft. Well, I know masons like him. They grow up gifted, but without a mote of discipline in their guts. Can't work with someone like that. Do you know where he went next? No idea. Maybe to Limoges or Angoulême. Maybe even to La Rochelle. Seemed to have plans for every cathedral on God's green earth, but none for himself. I understand. I'll leave you to it then. Bon voyage. We had just left Tor when I suddenly felt dizzy. I stopped and made rest, trying to catch my breath, then lost my breakfast in a ditch at the side of the road. To my horror, our baby too had grown pale, his breath shallow like that of an old man. I tried not to panic, but the next inn was a long distance away and we couldn't stay on the road where it was wet and cold.
I managed to walk until the sun had fully risen before I keeled over. A knife merchant who'd been travelling behind me flagged down a coach heading back to Tor and haggled with the coachman to carry me back to an inn. Back in Tor, the fever got worse. I remember people carrying me into a room, laying me on a bed. I tried to feed my baby, but after that everything turned into a blur. When I awoke, Jack was standing next to my bed. He scolded me for following him. You know you could go anywhere you want, he whispered. Why be stupid and follow me? I tried to answer, but he just opened the window and jumped out, heading toward ancient Greece, or maybe all the way to Arabia. And in my feverish mind, I followed him. The further I went, the angrier I got. For years I'd been fighting for my family. I'd committed myself to an oath to my father. I'd built up a business to sustain it and even married a man I despised so I could create a future for the people around me. I'd known nothing but my duty to the men in my life, while the man I was trying to find live a life of casual irresponsibility. He travelled the world on a whim to learn about mathematics and philosophy while I had to raise the child he'd fathered. When could I ever do anything just for myself? I asked the world as I went on. I'd travelled in a circle all the way to the edge of the world and back, only to return to the place of our failure. With my eyes closed, I listened to the sound of ripping yarn and crumbling walls, and of coaches carrying good people away into a cloud of crimson dust. When the last moat had settled, I opened my eyes again and found myself in a dirty little room. An old maid was sitting next to my bed and smiled at me, then handed me my baby. Oh, dear God, he still looked so pale. The more I tried to keep him warm, the colder he felt. Oh, please, God, let him live. Don't punish him for my own sins. I gently caressed his head until finally he put his mouth to my breast and drank and drank more and more, becoming greedier with every swallow. We had both been spared. We rested one more day. Then I gathered my things and headed back to the cathedral to thank the Lord for his mercy. Thank you, dear Lord. All right, steady now. I thank now. you for having spared my child. I thank you for... Don't let go until it's done. But why are you showing mercy on me? I failed everyone I cared about. I failed Jack. I failed my brother. And if I never return, I would also break the oath I had given father. It's just... It's just that I feel like I've never had a life of my own. I've always fought for others, and this may be the very first time that I fight for something that I only want for myself. Maybe I should just go back and help rebuild Kingsbridge. Maybe Jack doesn't even care for me anymore. Amen. Huh. I've seen one of those before. It's amazing, isn't it? The man who did that really had it in him. 
I agree. He always did. Oh, you knew Master Jacques. Yes, but it's been a while since I last saw him. It's a shame that the master let him go. In just one month, he did so many things. The master builder said he'd fired him after just three days. <sighs> did he? Well, maybe that's how he remembers it. The two didn't really see eye to eye, you know? To tell you the truth, everyone thinks that he feared for his own job having someone like that around. The last thing Jack did was carve that corbel. It was the one thing the master let him do. Then when he was done, he was asked to leave. Your master said he had no discipline. <laughs> let me tell you something. Jacques worked very hard on it. He was impatient and had a temper, but you could see that he tried to overcome it. Conquering that rock was very important to him. Oh, I understand that so well. Do you happen to know where he went next? He wanted to walk the pilgrim trail to Santiago de Compostela. The Camino? The way of St. James? He said he might find someone there who knew his father. Just one more thing. How was he when he left? Hmm. Never thought about that. Relieved, I guess. He seemed ready for something new. Thank you so much for your help. Think nothing of it. And good luck on your travels. May you find what you are looking for.